and we have a very cool looking electric bike here. Unfortunately, um, Anthony, who did it, is uh, not here, but Mal, our electric uh, car and electric bike guru, is going to tell us all about it, hopefully. <laughs> yes, I certainly will. <laughs> all right. um, I assisted putting the bike together. Yep. Well, gave instruction anyway. I didn't actually have to do too, too, too much. Anthony was very capable. Cool. Uh, um, it's an electric here? bike. Yep. The, uh, I'll start at the back, I guess, the business end. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a uh, <coughs> 200 watt uh, electric motor here, 36 volt battery. Mm -hmm. It's a brushless motor. The speed controller is internal to the hub, which is kind of neat because it means you don't have to find space for it anywhere else on the bike right. and it keeps it really well self-contained. Is there anything on the other? Oh, right. Okay. So it's the wires up. come in the other side and yep. they're just cable tied up to the frame. I see it. In the middle of the frame here, he's built a burglar alarm <laughs> or, or an anti-theft alarm, I guess oh, it is right, for a pushy. Okay. <laughs> built up from a project. Um, you yep. can see the AA batteries there to power it when the uh, bike's um, not being powered by the, uh, by the main pack. Oh, it's a uh, short circuit. It's a, it's a J-car thing. Yes, it is. Right. Uh, there's a tilt switch on the back of the battery pack, a, a mercury switch. So if the bike, uh, with the bike tilted as it is at the moment, I think yep. you'll find the switch is uh, just tilted a little bit in the off position. If right. you stand it up, the mercury rolls to the other end and it, uh, and it closes the circuit. Nice. And uh, the, where's the uh, buzzer? Where's the uh, screamer on it? Does it have a screamer, Dave? I don't know. Does it have a screamer? Or, <laughs> or does, does it just, just not work? It just not. It just doesn't. Ah, work. under the seat. That's under right. Under the seat. Oh, I remember okay. now. Oh, there we go. There's the screamer. There, there it is. is. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Anti theft electric <laughs> bike. <laughs> On the front, we've got a um, Oatly ten watt LED. 10 watt, nice. It's really, really bright when it when it's on and you look at it. You've got stars. For hours so do you afterwards. know what uh, brand that is? Is it a Cree? Is it a one hung low cheapy from China? Is it? A... I suspect it's the one hung low cheapy from China. Right. <laughs> and nice. that's powered through a little step down. Yep. Converter here, a switch mode converter. So it takes uh, anything up to 50 volts input and steps it down to 12 volts, ready for the LED. Got it. The LED has a constant current source in the back of it. How hard is it to? take an existing bike and actually modify it to get a fully electric bike. Well, when we, um, when I went to Dave's house to start assisting mm. in the project, they had already started pretty much pulling the bike apart. And I think he was riding by about lunchtime. Wow, really? Um, so Fantastic. it doesn't take very long. What does take time is tidying up the wires and making it look nice. Got it. Um, yep. My own bike is the same design. And uh, I think I've had it apart about twice because I wasn't happy with how the wires were right. run. <laughs> Fussy about the details, huh? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, because, you know, like you've got uh, tubing and all sorts of stuff along here. So I guess you want to, you know, pride in your work. You'd want to... Uh, That's right. You know. Do, a... Could you hide it inside the tubes or something? Do people do that? Well, this bike has a yes. few extra wires for the lights and the, and the mm -hmm. alarm. Um, yep. Mine just has, I think, two or three running from the front. So they just pa run parallel to the brake cables. Right. So it, they hide quite nicely under the frame. Yes, you could uh, drill holes in the ends of the tubes and push the wires through. Yep. That would look quite nice. I don't know what it would do structurally. Well... <laughs> Might not be so clever. Might and end in tears. What's, what's the legal requirements in Australia for electric 200 bikes? watts. 200 watts. 200 so watts. Anything over 200 watts, it's classified as a... It's not classified as anything, actually. Oh, you can't really? make it road legal, and oh. it's not legal to ride on public places. Wow, you can't even register it as an motor, electric motorbike or something That's right. like that? Or? That's right, because oh, it doesn't right. comply with the appropriate oh. Australian design rules. Great. So, uh, so uh, anything above that is in no man's land. Right. Interesting, so, segways are in the same position. They're not legal on public places either. Oh, okay. So technically, you're not allowed legally allowed to ride a Segway. That's right. In That's Australia. Right. That's right. Fail. Government, <laughs> another government fail. Yes, right. it is. Oh, yes, it is. Boy. Killjoys. Yep. So, how much performance can you get out of a 200 watt legal limit a bike? <coughs> 200 watt legal limit bike. Uh, uh, so this it, one will goes about 32 kilometres an hour. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So it's not what super about fast. Hills and stuff like that. Um, I live at the top of a fairly steep hill, mm -hmm. and uh, I have to give it a little bit of assistance up the hill, but right. not much. Okay. So you can do combined pedal power as yeah. well. As, you you, have, you know. to. you right. have to. You have to. You have to. 
I love it. And how long would you usually get on a, a battery pack of that size and weight? How, what sort of if you performance on a flat, you know, a reasonably flat Yeah, if you surface. believe the website, I think it says something like 50 or 60 kilometres on the, on the website. Right. Um, in reality, I've been riding uphill and down dale, um, Sydney terrain. Yep. And it's realistically more like about 30. Right, about half the yeah. figure. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. It's Some... Um, I've, if you put lower or slicks on, yep. uh, of course that, that helps, pushing lower knobbly tyres around. Yeah, that's right, because these are like <coughs> mountain bike tyres, right? So if you get low <coughs> rolling resistance <coughs> tyres, yeah. you would... What is interesting about these tyres, though they are quite worn, oh, he's got a, uh... is that uh, if he had full tread on here, yep. um, you've actually got almost continuous contact with the ground anyway. So if you're riding right. up and down, you're... Rolling resistance isn't too bad. And what's the market like for these bikes? Are they selling commercially? Are they selling well commercially? Do you know? Because you can buy commercial electric bikes fully. Yes, you can. Made. There's been quite a few um, little shops pop up. Mm. Some disappear. Yep. Um, but that are specialising in, in electric bikes. There's, uh, oh, to plug a mate's business name, is Glowworm Bicycles. Please do. Um, Glowwormbicycles.com.au. <laughs> Probably. Probably. In, in Sydney. Um, uh, so there's little businesses and industries yep. popping up around it. There's also kits available online from on mm -hmm. eBay where all good and bad things come from. Yep. And from this manufacturer here, which is Golden Motor. Okay, so this is a Golden Motor. It sounds very uh, Chinese, one hung lowy. It certainly is. <laughs> right. <laughs> They've got agents here in Australia now, or distributors in Australia now. So hopefully you can save a little bit on the on the shipping. Right. And I'm sure their competitor is called Golden Lucky Happy Motor Co. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Are there any other uh, uh, things people need to know about building an electric bike? Not like this? a it's whole lot. Well, stuff, I'll, 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 um, I'll start at the, start yeah, at the front now. <laughs> um, in the kit, you get a few different things. Mm -hmm. You'll get uh, two, brake, two new brake handles. Being a brushless motor, this one does have regeneration. Yep. And what's really neat about this is you can program it as well. Um, dial up how much or little you want. Mm -hmm. um, there's a switch on each of these brake levers. What it will do is, in the case of a brushless motor and controller like this one, it will turn on the regen and turn off the throttle if it's, if it's on. Mm -hmm. And it will, uh, on a DC type bike, it'll um, just cut the speed controller because you don't want to be fighting the speed controller with the right. brakes. Um, the mechanical brakes are all the same. The throttle is hiding under here. Got it. I prefer a thumb throttle like this one. Yep. Because if you're pushing your bike around up and down stairs like I do to get out of my backyard, invariably you end up twisting the throttle and the bike takes off on you. Right. So it's actually quite a good safe. I find this safer. Right. Yeah, that, that would be embarrassing, <clears throat> wouldn't you? Because if you are moving the bike around, I can imagine you would accidentally twist the throttle and yes. whoosh, <laughs> yeah. off it goes. Especially when you're not used to an electric bike. <laughs> Um, so we've got the throttle, the brakes, yep. and the battery pack here. That slides off the back and has a little charge port on the side of it. Right. Oh, okay. So you can take it away to charge it or remove it off the bike because yep. really the charge is probably worth. That, that the looks battery like an is worth. RCA connector. It is actually an RCA <laughs> it is connector. An RCA connector. <laughs> How many amps can you get through an RCA connector? Well, I think it's about one or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, there's an Anderson plug on the front of the battery pack. Right. Um, which is a nice quick disconnect. Yep. Sweet. And you can slide the battery off the carrier, off the back for yep. charging or storage or just to prevent theft because that's probably the most expensive single component. Sure. It's, I think this one will be a 10, 10 amp hour 36 volt. I've and already talked about the hub motor having yep. a speed controller built in. That's one of the advantages of a right. golden motor. Otherwise, you have to figure out where to put it, maybe down here or under here. And, and that the, would be the wiring how, looks how messy. Physically messy. Big would a speed controller. The speed controllers are like. usually about right. that yay okay. big and that thick, so they're not too hard to hide, but it just makes it a whole lot more compact. Sure, if it's built into the hub. What about uh, how hot would one <coughs> of those get? What about electronics reliability in <coughs> there? Would that be an issue? Like that was a concern, I guess, with the earlier models, but right. this uh, brand has been around for a long time now. Okay. A few people have blown up controllers for various reasons. I don't really know why, but uh, I've, right. but yeah, they're good. They're onto the next version now, and they're still keeping the speed controller inside the hub, so they're obviously not having trouble with heat dissipation. And what happens if the controller blows? Do you buy a new one, or is it? Yes, it's um, it's a it... bit of a mission to pull the 
hub apart from yep. what I hear because right. you're fighting the magnets and the coils and everything inside. Got but it. once it's apart, it's... Yep. Um, oh, you can, it, could service it in theory? You could service it, right. pull it out and replace it. And yep. in fact, the circuit board on it is physically identical to the one that's external in a box. Right. So you could order it as a spare part and refit it or, yep. or just delete the controller altogether and use another one. So you can use it as a pretty, just a normal bike. Do you have to disengage the anything? You can you ride it as a normal bike. So you just leave it switched off? Yeah, you just leave it switched off. Right. Um, with a brushless motor like this, there's yep. always rolling resistance. Yep. So it's a bit of a challenge to pedal. Oh, okay. Unpowered. So it's fairly significant. Yeah, it in is. Term, right, it if is. you don't use it. So there's a penalty there if you yeah. have an electric bike and you want to do it the old fashioned way. Yes, that's right. That's one right. of the advantages of the little DC hub motors that are about that big. Right. The little motors spin quite fast mm -hmm. through a planetary gear reduction yep. and they also freewheel. So you can pedal it a lot easier. Got it. They, do they automatically freewheel or do yes. you have to disengage? No. Yeah, they okay. automatically, automatically freewheel. Nice. And these, you can't really disengage it, can you? Not at all. It's, no. all. it's all built in. It's all there. It's one piece. And how much would it cost to make an electric bike? Because you, you built yours from scratch? Yes, much like this. I bought a frame from cheap frame from yep. Big W or... It was. <laughs> oh, have, no expense uh, spared. Right, to have uh, streamers and all the bell on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And the little clicker thing in the spokes. Oh, right. Um, and, and the, um, so the bike was cheap, but the, the kit, I think, at the time was about 1200 shipped. Wow, okay, right. So they're not... It's not insignificant. Right. Still cheaper than buying at a shop. Right. And how much would they cost in the shop to get a fully built, fully tested... I haven't actually looked for a long, long time... Okay. Look up Glowworm Bikes website. Glowwormbikes.com.au, <laughs> most likely. Or Google yes. it. Thank you very much, Matt. My pleasure, Dave.